Manilow was blown away and asked her to perform with him. And there was a mega-selling first album that won a Grammy. Did you know you'd be a star? I, well, I knew since the age of seven, that's what I wanted to be. And I always used to say, I have a famous-sounding name. Mama, don't I have a famous-sounding name? Like, think about it. Listen, Aretha Franklin... who was much more upfront, Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson from Chicago, Illinois. Yes, sir. Says that you just finished work on a Disney cruise ship. Yes. Yes. We're, we're going to expect something better than a cruise ship performance, right? Mm -hmm. Today? Yeah, definitely that. You're here because you think you're the next American Idol. Yes, I do. You think you're the best that we can find in America. Yes. All right, what you going to sing? Show Your Love With Me by Aretha Franklin. It's okay. Right. Go for it. All right. It's an evil wind that blows no good. Yeah, yeah. It's a sad heart that won't love like I know it should. Oh, how lonesome you must be. It's a shame if you don't share. singer I've heard so far. Brilliant. Wow, thank you. Paula? No doubt about it. You can sing your behind off. And you got an excellent voice. Very good. Thank you. Very, very good. Thank Randy, yes or no? Uh, definitely yes for me. Paula? Amen. Jennifer? See you in Hollywood. Jennifer? See you in Hollywood. knocked out every competitor, even if she was unfamiliar with the Broadway show which spawned the movie. I didn't even know the character's name. I just knew the name of the song. You didn't know Effie? No. Nope. I ended up in the film, and I was like, wow. And then I had to gain weight for Effie. I had to gain 20 pounds. Effie is the big-bodied member of a trio who gets bumped for a slimmer singer. As for the award-winning actress's own weight back then, it was something she never thought about. I didn't even know I was overweight until I was in Hollywood somewhere on the red carpet and the lady was like, how does it feel to be a big girl? And I'm like, who's she talking to? <laughs> because this is normal where I come from, you know. 29-year-old Jennifer comes from the south side of Chicago and has vivid memories of the old days. I remember a little black girl that used to sit on the church steps and sing. When did you begin singing? I started singing at the age of seven. That was when I first had my first solo in church. Yep. Do you remember what you sang? I sang once Jesus bear the cross alone, and I forgot the words in the middle of the song, and the congregation had to help me, <laughs> help me out. <laughs> and then I look up, and you're like, oh, my God, this little girl can really sing. People around the country were saying the same thing more than a decade later when Jennifer turned up on the 2004 edition of American Idol. If you want my love, if you were shocked to see her eliminated. You are my American Idol! Only making it to seventh place. Like, yeah, you cry, and you have your moment, and it's like, okay, because I still have my voice. It's not, so it's not over. Like, I, I, I still got my instrument, and I'm gonna have to sing my way to it. And sing she did. Barry Manilow was blown away and asked her to perform with him. And there was a mega-selling first album that won a Grammy. Did you know you'd be a star? I, well, I knew 
since the age of seven, that's what I wanted to be. And I always used to say, I have a famous sounding name. Mama, don't I have a famous sounding name? Like, think about it. Listen, Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Jennifer Hudson. And you keep going, and it just fits right in. And I used to tease her and say that. Jennifer Hudson has never strayed far from her Chicago roots, despite a meteoric rise to fame and even Oscar gold. She is still the Southside girl with the voice that can rock the rafters. Child of Inglewood, Hudson's first audiences were at church and Dunbar Academy. She was a girl full of dreams long before the red carpets, awards, and movies. Elimination from American Idol and the disdain of Simon Cowell, just a minor detour on the way to Jennifer's destiny. Just know that anything is possible. It doesn't matter where you're from. I love you too. Just a week after Hudson won an Oscar for stealing the spotlight in Dreamgirls, she brought her golden boy home to Dunbar. I just wanted to bring it here for you all to see because if, it's, if you can see it, you can achieve it. Jennifer is seen here with her proud mother during a tribute at the Chicago Theater just a year and a half ago. The performer has a condo in Chicago and has remained in the embrace of her close-knit family. But I'm so grateful to have my mother here celebrating with me. So when I go home, I just want to go to my mama's house and do nothing. <laughs> I love coming back to my hometown, to my high school, to my neighborhoods, anywhere where I come from because that's what it's about. Life's not as bad as it may seem if you open your eyes to what's in front of you. I thank you all for helping me keep the faith even when I didn't believe. Thank you and God bless you all. seen some of the greatest singers of all time. Where does this lady rank? She really ranks right up there. For me, I've been known to be involved with divas, whether it started with Dion Warwick, which mm -hmm. led to Aretha Franklin, and then it led to Whitney and Annie Lennox. Uh, when I saw that audition for that mm -hmm. movie part, uh, I saw a depth and a range and a soulfulness that really ranks at the top mm. level, and that's why we've been working together ever since. I mean, I've always assumed, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it would be hard to beat Whitney at her peak. Hard, right? When I hear you sometimes, I do genuinely feel, and I'm not as expert like Clive is, but I feel... She's nearly there, maybe as good now. Oh, there's, well, listen, we, it's hard to make comparisons for years, you know, working with the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, yeah. I was always said, well, can Whitney compare with uh, Aretha? When you, they're all-timers, and Jennifer shows her versatility, and she's special. I, as, a, as a kid at 11, I would sit and, and create duets between Whitney and I with her, I will always love you, and, and like, did you really? yes, I did, and so to be sitting here right now with him is like, I feel like I'm drinking. And so to be sitting here right now with him is like, I feel like I'm drinking. Live right now on Grammy.com, Jennifer Hudson and Clive Davis himself. Sir, first of all, congratulations. I mean, thank you so much. It's an exciting night. It's so exciting. You know, it's just memorable, you know, to see the turnout, to see people coming back year in and year out. And uh, we're thrilled to be here. Icon in the music business, and this is a, about the 30th year of this party. You bring it all together. What does it mean to you? Why is it important for you to bring artists of all different ilks, all different backgrounds together from film, TV, music, all here tonight? Uh, we do it, or I do it, because I want to celebrate music. There are no awards being given out. There's just time. My competitors come every year. They honor me. I do this as my extended living room, and then we're just going to lay down our own. Music. Out of bad living room, Jennifer, what does Clive mean to you? He means everything to me. He is like music. He's such a legend and a genius, and I'm just honored to be here with him. Thank you so much for coming. Jennifer, what does Clive mean to you? He means everything to me. He means everything to me.
He's everything to me. And just as it seemed things couldn't be any better, something happened that couldn't be any worse.
cannot. Is there any indication of when they were shot? We're not sure. Uh, neighbors in the neighborhood did report hearing gunshots sometime earlier this morning, about 8, 9 o'clock this morning. Is there any sign of forced entry into the home or anything taken? No, there was no sign of any forced entry. Uh, we're not sure if anything's missing from the house. Is Jennifer Hudson been Thank notified? you. Jennifer Hudson's voice lit up this church last year. Her mom was in the front pew, reveling in her daughter's success. I think every parent wants to see that child accomplish that dream. And uh, such a tragedy, but at least her mother got to see her reach heights that was just phenomenal. One week later, Jennifer Hudson won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Once again, shared the spotlight with her family. While her daughter's career took off, Darnell Hudson Donerson kept the family's roots firmly planted in Inglewood. Just last month, Jennifer Hudson was asked about her mother's early influence. Some of which reminds me of my mother. Oh, wow. Someone that she would always invite anything else. Oh, yes. Uh, temptations. Uh, could have been anything that you want to. I can tell you. The way you do the things you do, like the temptations. She would always sing that to us. Tonight, Hudson's fans can't believe tragedy is tainting an Inglewood success story. Every time we see a person going about it from Chicago, something, something always happened. My heart just sank. Um, I was very sad for her, especially the loss of her mom and her brother at the same time. Hudson's cousin is actually the music director here at Progressive Baptist Church. She was scheduled to have her own choir rehearsal for a group of children here when he got the news about the shooting. We do not know and we cannot confirm whether a suspect is in custody. We do know that the suspect in the case has a criminal background. ABC 7's Karen Jordan is here now with more on what we know about William Balfour. Karen. Well, Cheryl and Ron Hill, here is what we know about William Balfour. He is the husband of Jennifer Hudson's older sister. They've been married about a year and a half. Balfour is 27 years old, 5 feet 8 inches tall, and about 150 pounds. He sometimes wears his hair in a braid. In braids, Balfour has an extensive criminal history. Records with the Illinois Department of Corrections show that he spent nearly 7 years in prison for attempted murder, vehicular hijacking, and possessing a stolen vehicle. His last arrest was in June, although authorities would not say what he was arrested for. He is out on parole now. Now, and Balfour is not the father of the missing child, seven-year-old Julian King. The police alert calls him a suspect in today's double homicide, and they believe that he is armed and dangerous. Now, while there are reports that Balfour is in custody, police will not confirm that, and they're still asking people to call Area 1 Special Victims Unit. If you have any information as to his whereabouts, that number is 312-747-8385. Again, that number, 312-747-8385. Now, Ron and Cheryl, again, police called Balfour a suspect in the case, but he has not been charged. All right, I don't understand it. You know, he, you know, seven years old, but he's the type of child he wouldn't know, you know. I'm just praying the Lord, the Lord will, he'll answer prayer, he'll send him home. Jennifer Hudson is used to the spotlight and being followed by cameras, but for her relatives, this experience is a struggle. Let me go, please. The whole family was Christian people. Um... Little Julian, very intellectual, very smart child, very smart, exceptionally smart. I, mean, I think he had asthma, though. I'm worried about him if he had his coat on or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. But like somebody, anybody, whoever, just let him go. Neighbors aren't waiting around for police to find the little boy. They're launching their own search and calling on others to help. This is an issue that has touched us all. The Hudson's family is a stable family in this community. We want to show them still trying to find their kid. This is a senseless murder, but you see the whole neighborhood has came together each day, and we are out here every day, you know, supporting one another. The Amber Alert for Julian King is still in effect. Anyone who's seen a white 1994 Chevy Suburban with Illinois license plate X584859 is urged to call police. SUV that police had been searching for in that case was found early this morning on the city's west side. The body of a young boy was found inside that vehicle. The body has not been identified yet. Jennifer Hudson's nephew, seven-year-old Julian King, has not been seen since Hudson's mother and brother were found dead inside their home on the south side Friday. ABC7's Dan Ponce is live with the latest on that. Dan? 
Sylvia, important to note, as you mentioned, that the body has not been identified, but the outlook is certainly grim for the Hudson family. According to early reports from the medical examiner's office, the description matches that of seven-year-old Julian King. But again, his identity has not been confirmed. It was just before nine o'clock this morning when police towed away the white SUV they've been looking for, uh, the vehicle that belongs to Jennifer Hudson's brother, Jason, who was killed along with their mother on Friday. The body of a child was found on the floor of the back seat. Uh, the medical examiner's office says that the, uh, the body is that of an African-American boy. Uh, there is an active, active police investigation underway at this hour. Uh, police blocked off about two city blocks here near the uh, intersection of 13th and Colon on Chicago's west side. Seven-year-old uh, Julian King has been missing since Friday. Uh, after uh, Jennifer Hudson's mother and brother were found shot to death, police, uh, as you'll recall, issued an amber alert. This morning, police got a call about a suspicious vehicle matching the description. When officers arrived here this morning, they found the body of a boy inside. Police have not released many details about the investigation and have not said when or how long the SUV has been here. And there's been a lot of discrepancies among the neighbors here, but most of the neighbors I spoke with this morning say they only noticed it this morning. tell the Chicago Tribune and Chicago Sun-Times that the suspect in the shooting of the mother and brother of Oscar-winning actress Jennifer Hudson is in custody. William Balfour is being questioned by police, but Hudson's seven-year-old nephew Julian King, who Balfour is suspected of abducting, still has not been found. Balfour is on parole and spent nearly seven years behind bars for attempted murder and carjacking. The bodies of Hudson's mother, Darnell Donerson, and brother Jason Hudson were discovered Friday afternoon in the family home on the city's south side. Public records show the house listed as one of Balfour's addresses. It appears that it could be related, domestic related, but until the investigation is complete, until we've gathered all the facts, um, we, would, we would be speculating, but it appears to be domestic related at this point. Neighbors who knew the family reacted outside the home. You know, they were real nice people. Real you know, I'm totally surprised that this had to happen. You know, this is just very sad for pretty much everybody out here right about now. There really was not never no trouble. Uh, family, you know, you never really heard anything from them or things like that. So it is kind of a shock. The killings come as the former American Idol contestant has a top single on the R&B charts. Hudson won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar last year for her role in Dream Girls. She also co-starred in this year's blockbuster Sex and the City movie. And never put limits on God because you never know what he's going to take you, okay? So let's see what he has in store next. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. And thank you for coming. visionary executive, a great man of music, please, Mr. Clive Davis. Congratulations, Clive. I love you so dearly. Okay. And now, the Grammy for Best R&B Album goes to Jennifer Hudson. It was news that family and friends of Oscar winner Jennifer Hudson had dreaded. The body of seven-year-old Julian King had been found after days of searching and desperate pleas. Officials say the little boy had been shot. Hudson, hidden from cameras by an umbrella, was taken along with relatives to identify the child's body. Her last words to me was, just tell the general public once again, to respect my family's privacy and... Um, 
continue with the prayers and support. Monday marked Hudson's second trip to the medical examiner's office in two days. She also ID'd her mother and older brother, who were found shot to death, in the family's Chicago home. Their bodies were discovered by a relative Friday morning. A few hours later, police issued an Amber Alert for King and asked residents to keep an eye out for a white SUV. They also arrested the boy's stepfather, William Balfour. Early Monday morning, several miles away from the original crime scene, a couple walking their dog realized an SUV parked on their block was the one that police had been looking for. Residents of this neighborhood say they are in shock. Me and you, and we talk. So now I can tell my side of the story of what happened on October 24, 2008. We heard a loud bang. The police kicked the back. <laughs> the police kicked the back door open. It wasn't no resistance or none of that, because they came in full force and put me right on the ground. We didn't know who it was. It could have been anybody. Well, if you're getting calls about people killed and your face is on television and the police are about to come through your door... All right, that's one option. <laughs> what would the other option be? It could have been anybody. You understood why you would be a suspect, right? As far as what? As far as the murders. No, I didn't understand. You didn't, you didn't understand why you would have been considered a suspect? No. For what? Everything that was said in trial about me making threats or anything like that, it was all new to me. All. That was said in trial about me making threats or anything like that, it was all new to me. Oh. Chicago man accused of killing Oscar winner Jennifer Hudson's mother, brother, and nephew appeared in court Tuesday. William Balfour, who had already been charged with three counts of first-degree murder and home invasion, was formally indicted by a grand jury during this latest hearing. That move allows the case to go to trial. No new details or charges emerged from the appearance, but Balfour's attorney did ask if his client could be transferred from a state facility to a Cook County jail to make communication easier. A decision on that request is expected in about three weeks. According to prosecutors, 27-year-old Balfour committed the October murders because he was upset that his estranged wife, Julia Hudson, was dating another man. Darnell Donerson and Jason Hudson were found shot to death in the family's home. The body of Julian King, Balfour's seven-year-old stepson, was discovered a few days later on the back seat of an SUV. In an extensive search of Chicago's south and west sides, police uncovered the gun they say was used in each of the shootings. Balfour has been in custody since shortly after the killings. His attorney says that there is no hard evidence linking his client to the Hudson family deaths, and he's conducting his own investigation. What has been the impact? Can you? I know that's a hard thing to do. The impact, the loss, the impact of the loss. Wow. This is, it's, it's literally just takes a part of you. And, and, and because of, there were so many shocks involved in it. Like, I can't even get over, like, who do I grieve for first? Mm -hmm. oh, who do I start with? So I find myself, moment, one moment, of course, I'm going to think of my mother. Mm -hmm. This is my mother. So I think of her a lot. Next, I think of, you know, I'm, okay, I'm Julian, you know, my brother. I have moments where it's, it's bits and pieces, like, it's too much. You didn't even know who to grieve for. So you don't even know, you're confused, your emotions are confused. And I haven't been to the grave site since we buried them, but now I want to go. And I haven't been to the grave site since we buried them, but now I want to go. As a memorial around Oscar winner Jennifer Hudson's childhood home grows, some chilling details are revealed about the suspect and the murders of her family members. Department of Corrections records show William Balfour missed an appointment with his parole officer on Friday. The same day, Hudson's mother and brother were shot to death and her nephew went missing. The parole agent says he followed up Friday afternoon on the no-show and Balfour told him he was babysitting on Chicago's west side. That agent also says he believes he heard a child in the background. Hudson's nephew, Julian King, was found dead in the back seat of an SUV in that part of the city on Monday morning. I wouldn't uh, in my wildest dream, would imagine that a crime happened all the way on the south side, end up in front of, well, across the street from my house. You know, it's devastating. 
Authorities won't say how long the boy had been dead, but an autopsy revealed he had been shot multiple times. King's grandmother and uncle were discovered shot to death in the family home Friday morning. Englewood residents say even though they have heard their share of gunshots, they're hoping the Hudson murders will lead to a change in how people react now when they hear them. If they hear anything like that, I mean, quick call the police. Because, you know, it could have been, it, they could have been saved or they could have been a laugh or they, the police could have came in time to get them out the house or take them to the hospital. Balfour, who is Hudson's brother-in-law, was arrested just hours after the shootings. Apparently, that wasn't the first strike on his record since being released from prison in 2006. He was picked up back in June for driving around with about $100 worth of crack cocaine. Authorities decided not to send him back to jail on that charge. And in August, Balfour's parole officer was turned away when he tried to do a home visit. The agent reported that suspicious activity may have been going on inside. My whole team wasn't ready for trial. They basically said that they wasn't ready for trial, but we was forced to trial. I mean, they done tested everything, and I was cleared of it. Evidence, the keys, was processed a month later. What police department take evidence off somebody and process it a month later? Keys that they sent that was in a, a file cabinet. What police department take evidence off somebody and process it a month later. Kings that they said that was in a, a foul cabinet. But now I want to go because I feel like, okay, I, we, 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 we've accomplished this. We've done this. We got justice for you. I can't come back here empty-handed. So I came back with justice being served. So now I feel like I deserve to be able to see them. To stand above the grave. Right. Locked up in a sergeant office. Who was to believe that? Who is who? What person in a right man wouldn't just put them in evidence and then check them out when they need them? You did everything else that you took up off of me like that. Process the same day or the next day. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that was done that I just can't remember right off back. That was wrong. That was truly wrong. Are people to believe that the key, the video, some of these statements, that those things, had they been presented, would have resulted in you being acquitted? Yes. These things show, in your opinion, that you didn't do this. Exactly. Is that right? Exactly. What it about, what about the gun? I forgot about the gun, too. When um, Jennifer Hudson testified, she said that she would tell her sister over and over again not to marry you. Were you aware of that? No. What kind of... I mean, when the relationship that we had when she comes around, it's always how or what's going on or about. I mean, this is a female that I grew up with who went to the same elementary school. If you didn't kill Jennifer Hudson's family, who, who did? I don't know. I mean, I could sit here and speculate to many names and just throw them out there to you. It, it still wouldn't solve it, period. The thing that got me is when my ex-wife got up on the stand and she knew, she knew for a fact that I never made a threat to her. When they was asked, why didn't she get an order of protection? She said she didn't believe me. 
I mean, I can assume that she has something to do with it, just off of that fact. Your ex-wife. Right, but I'm not going to do that. Well, you just did. No, I said I can assume that. I'm not saying that she had something to do with it. I didn't do that. Well, why, what motive would she have? I don't know. I say I can assume that she has something to do with it. But I just said I'm not going to do that. You can understand why you were convicted, can't you? Yeah. I can understand it. You just don't agree with it? No. I'm never going to agree with it. No. I'm never going to agree with it. Whereas Julian D. King was born in Chicago, Illinois on August 14, 2001. Jennifer Hudson just couldn't hold back the tears on the oral proclamation naming this Julian King Day in Chicago. Julian would have been 11 years old today, but in 2008 he was murdered, along with Jennifer Hudson's mother and brother. William Balfour, ex-husband of Jennifer's sister, was convicted of triple homicide. Jennifer and Julian Hudson were there for every moment of the 13-day trial. And today, the superstar entertainer spoke to me about the trial for the first time. Why was it so important for you to be there each and every day? That's very easy to answer. My mother would have been there, so I had to be there every step of the way. Both of us did. Like, she never missed a beat. And, and to honor them and to do what we were taught to do, what we saw as example growing up, that was the only thing to be done is was to be there. So nothing else mattered. We had to be there. For the second straight year, through a foundation named for Julian, the Hudson sisters distributed school supplies to needy kids at the Crotch Center in West Pullman to honor Julian's memory. To have a vision and then to see it manifest and, and happen and then to see so much beauty and love come from it, that, that's our ultimate goal. Now the sisters want to turn the Inglewood home where their mother, Donnell Donerson, was murdered into a shelter for single women and children. We will want a transitional house where they come and stay. We help them get on their feet. Are things beginning to get back to normal for you? I feel like as though we have like a, a new beginning and it's 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 beautiful. You know, we're still blessed and I mean we've had our loss, but um we're finding our way. I feel like as though we have like a, a new beginning and it's 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 beautiful you know we're still blessed and i mean we've had our loss but um we're finding our way trusted him and always knew that something could go wrong obviously couldn't predict the horror that happened but you always knew right you felt something when you felt felt that your sister was dating him and was thinking about marrying him yeah it, it's just you know when you can't do anything about something or or you feel like you see something but i read that you didn't even trust him in the sixth grade oh no it was a nightmare yeah. jesus but well, it's bad if you're not trusted in the sixth yeah, grade it was bad and i know again at the same time I what feel did you see in the sixth grade in the murderer of your family that made you feel like something was off well <laughs> well <laughs> For Judge Burns. Yeah, I know who Judge Burns is. I just don't remember what he said. Judge Burns said, your heart is an arctic night and your soul is as barren as dark space. You understand what that means? Yeah, it's his opinion. Do you have a heart and a soul? Of course I do. 
It's not what he said it is. And you don't know who did it? No. Or you're just not willing to say? No, it's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. You know how many people are steady getting out of penitentiaries for something that people think that they did and it wasn't true? For prosecutorial misconduct? For police misconduct? Abuse of discretion? I mean, all those words mean something, Mr. Gowdy. All of them. It just takes a matter of time. It's like a needle in a haystack. You gotta find it. Only way you're gonna find it if you lift it up and then fall out. And you think you're capable of finding that needle on your own? I think I'm on the right path. The right path being what? As far as doing my own legal work. Studying. Getting right to the point. Do you think you should be someday exonerated for what happened? I believe so. He was more to himself and quiet. He went to jail right after eighth grade when we graduated. It didn't surprise any of us. What did you tell yourself every day as you sat in that courtroom with your family? You what know did you what? tell yourself? How did you prepare yourself for that every day? Actually, it's this song called Peace Be Still. Oh, I love it. Yes, and I pulled, I, I had in my phone or in my notes the, the lyrics to the song, Weather the Rapture, the Storms, Toss Sea, No Demons, um... Demons or something where may, wherever they may be, um, peace be still. And I would look at that all the time. Have you forgiven him? Yes, because I feel like it, 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 for the most part, it's not his fault. Like it's what he was taught, how he was brought up. Like this is a reality, and everything that's happened in the past 15 years sometimes seems like a dream. I don't watch her walk around with towels on her head when she was little. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it all in America. I'm crying. I don't say to get an Oscar, a Grammy, Christian, a ship, and now this. Congratulations. Aww.